Welcome to Mr. Do Reviews. Today I'm going to review Arobi's AeroPress Coffee Maker and the Parallax JP30 Ceramic Burr Hand Grinder. You can find Amazon links to these products in the description below. The Arobi AeroPress debuted at a coffee industry trade show in November of 2005, invented by Alan Adler, a Stanford University engineering instructor. Interestingly enough, Adler is known as inventor of the Arobi flying disc, reminiscent of the ancient Indian weapon the Chakram, made famous by a Caucasian actress by the name of Lucy Lawless who played Xena the Warrior Princess, a TV show from the 1990s. Adler, inspired by the ancient Indian weapon, began experimenting with recreational flying discs in the 1970s and set two Guinness World Records for a thrown object. In 1980, their predecessor to the Aerobi flying disc called the Skyro flew 261 meters. Fast forward to 2004 when Adler began shifting his focus from toys to studying the coffee brewing process. The culmination of his studies resulted in the invention of the Aerobi Aeropress. I purchased my first Aeropress in January of 2014 and have been using it ever since, going on four years now. I only use it about once or twice a week over the weekends as my day job at the office has an espresso machine which provides all the free Americano I want. This is where I want to talk about the difference between American black coffee and Americanos. While an Americano can be considered a black coffee, i.e. with no sugar or cream, you can't call American style drip coffee an Americano. Why is that? It comes down to the brewing process. American style black coffee is traditionally brewed by pouring hot water over coffee grounds and a paper filter while an Americano is essentially an espresso shot with hot water added, what American soldiers did in the European theater during World War II. And if you didn't know already, an espresso uses a finer grind of coffee beans and a machine that creates about 9 bars or 130 psi of pressure that pushes about 170 degree Fahrenheit or 76.7 degree Celsius water through a packed puck of fine coffee grounds that creates one or two shots. Add additional water to that and you've got an Americano. As you can see, the brewing process is starkly different creating very different flavors from what could be otherwise the same coffee beans. I personally have come to love Americanos, as the crema produced in the process of making espressos really brings out the flavor of coffee beans to their fullest potential. So what does this have anything to do with the AeroPress? Well, the AeroPress has quickly developed a cult following, evidenced by the insane number of reviewers from Amazon, which coffee drinking aficionados have instantly recognized as providing a great cup of coffee. And my theory is that while this press doesn't come near the required 9 bars of pressure to create a true espresso, I would guess it produces about 2-3 bars of pressure depending on the coffee grind and what kind of filter you use which means you get a cup of coffee somewhere in between traditional American drip coffee and an Americano from a product that costs a fraction of the price of an espresso machine at around $32. It's fast and simple to use with very little maintenance and in a small enough package you could take it with you anywhere like a business trip, camping, or when visiting friends or relatives who don't share your love of freshly brewed coffee. The AeroPress even produces a little bit of crema, not nearly as thick or creamy as an espresso, but definitely a step above regular drip coffee. Here are the components that come with the AeroPress. A stirrer, scooper, a holder for the paper filters, and the paper filters themselves. I actually don't use most of these, but your preference may differ from mine. I personally use a metal filter. I believe this one is by Able Brewing, but you can find a lot of aftermarket filters with varying degrees of fineness in terms of mesh. Using a metal filter, you do get some silt or fine coffee grounds in your coffee cup, but you can reduce this by using a finer filter. Using a finer filter means you'll also need to push harder on the plunger, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. It's good in that it will create more pressure giving you a different extraction rate more similar to an espresso and bad in that it takes more effort to push the plunger down. But I find that you don't necessarily push down on it more so than just putting your weight into it so it doesn't really require all that much effort. Using a metal filter you'll get more of the coffee oils which is what I want and you'll avoid contaminating the flavor of your coffee with the taste of paper if using paper filters. You can reduce this contamination by pre-soaking your paper filters in hot water but I'd rather save time and trees by avoiding them altogether. But if you can't stand fine coffee particles in your coffee, you'll just have to use the paper filters. The AeroPress is made of BPA-free plastic and the plunger uses a large rubber cap which has held up quite well over the years and I don't suspect it will fail anytime soon. The diameter of the AeroPress doesn't allow it to be used with small cups, in which case this funnel should come in handy. You could also use the funnel to guide the grounds into the AeroPress or coffee beans into a grinder. The only con I can think of for the AeroPress is that it can only brew about two strong coffees at a time with a small reservoir or about four watered down servings. So you would have to repeat the brewing process of the AeroPress for three or more guests if they prefer strong coffee by clearing the used coffee grounds and starting again. Cleanup is a snap though. Here's what 35 grams of ground coffee looks like in the AeroPress, which should make two strong cups of coffee. Why 35 grams? Because that's how much I can fit in the Portex JP30 Ceramic Burr Hand Grinder. I purchased this along with my AeroPress in early 2014 along with the Hario Hand Grinder. I paid about $40 for the Portex at the time and I don't know why the price went up to $66 last time I checked when there are similar and cheaper options out there. 
I probably would have ordered a cheaper version like the Java Press, but I didn't see it at the time or it might not even have been available yet. It would be nice to see how much coffee grounds are in the bottom so the viewing hole seems like a better design. Porlex, however, is a Japanese company that has been around since 1978 and the quality of their builds like many Japanese products are excellent. What I liked about the Hario was that it was light and you could see exactly how much coffee grounds you made. What I didn't like about it was that they tended to cling to the inside of the walls like they had a static charge and so after pouring out the grounds there would still be quite a bit stuck inside the walls no matter how you tap it making it look dirty and forcing you to clean it out after every use. The Porlex doesn't have this problem. Most of the grounds come out with a few taps and since it isn't see-through it always looks clean on the outside. On my model, you'll see it has a pentagonal nut, but it appears in newer models they decided to go with a rectangular tab. Why, I don't know. There may have been durability issues where it got stripped and no longer able to turn with the handle. Or maybe the handle popped off during use for too many users, but in the 4 years I've been using it, that has only happened a handful of times, but it was always when I was in a hurry to get a cup of coffee. There are several things that make this hand grinder great. One, it uses a conical ceramic burr so you get good consistent grinds and it will last a long time because ceramic is harder than metals and won't corrode so it's virtually maintenance free. Ceramic is brittle though so you don't want to get any rocks or pebbles accidentally in the hopper or it could crack the burrs. Two, it's much quieter than an electric grinder so you won't disturb anyone around like a roommate or your family as long as you don't grind it next to their hand. And three, it's portable so you can take it anywhere with you and I don't know if Adler designed the AeroPress purposely this way but the Porlex fits perfectly inside the AeroPress. The Porlex Mini also fits in here but will stick out less out the top. The only downside I could think of of using a manual hand grinder is that the time it takes to use it. For a single serving which for me is about 15 grams of coffee beans takes about a minute, about the time it takes to boil my water. If you're grinding for two, it takes about two minutes. Compare that to the seconds it takes for a machine, but again, it will be louder and depending on your machine, you might not get as good a grind as you would with the Porlex. Not to mention the added maintenance and costs involved. The Porlex takes longer to grind if you want a finer grind and it goes faster for coarse grinds. You can adjust your grind by tightening or loosening this nut. There's little bumps in the plastic that click as you turn it. From the tightest setting, I set mine to about 7 clicks out. The coarser and looser you make it, the less consistent grind you'll get as you'll notice the burr tends to wobble the looser it gets. It's easy to disassemble when you want to clean it. These two parts are plastic and you'll notice the metal nut embedded inside this one. And these are the ceramic parts. You'll notice some additional plastic parts inside that holds the guts. I imagine these dimples on the side is what holds them in place. Let me put it back together and show you what it looks like when you turn the handle. As you can see, the spiral or conical shape forces the beans into the burrs. If it was metal, after frequent use the metal edges would wear down and need sharpening otherwise you would get a terrible grind. As I mentioned earlier, since this is ceramic you'll never need to sharpen it since ceramic is harder than metals. It should last about 5 times longer after which you would just have to buy replacement burrs. Here's a few different grinds from a fine setting about 3 clicks out, a medium setting at 10 clicks out, and a very loose setting. You can see how inconsistent it gets on the loose setting. Here's what the AeroPress weighs on its own the Porlex, and when combined. Personally, I'm not against drinking instant coffee if going out camping or hiking. The beans I'm using are Kirkland Signature Colombian Supremo, which in my opinion is the best value for the taste. Colombian beans are what I consider the stereotypical or quintessential flavor of coffee, but the best coffee beans I've ever tried was about 3 years ago. It was a Starbucks limited edition Casi Cielo which is usually only available seasonally in late winter or early spring. But keep in mind there appears to be reports from regular drinkers of these beans that the flavors tend to be inconsistent from bag to bag. If you do get a good bag of Casi Cielo, you'll be in for a pleasant surprise. To me, it tasted more like hot cocoa than coffee, with hints of lemon. Every year around March, I keep a lookout for these at my local Starbucks shops, as I think that's the surest way to get a fresh bag. I haven't ordered one from Amazon yet, but I probably will one day. I'll leave Amazon links to all the products I mentioned in this review in the description below. And that concludes my review of the Robi AeroPress and the Porlex JP30 ceramic hand grinder. Next time I'll be reviewing Korean mixed coffees and some other instant coffees and talk about their ingredients and do a taste test. Please support my channel by giving it a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.